Hello, everybody. Happy Friday. It's another Facebook Friday. Here we are. Second Friday of the year. Hope you guys are warm and cozy where you are. I know some of you have some crazy weather going on. Let's see if I am in the right place. All right. I am. Looks good. All right. So today, let's see. Are you guys jumping on? Okay, good. So today we are um, using another celebration set watercolor melon this is a great set um it's one of those called uh, distinctive stamps which means it's photopolymer which is our clear stamps and when you look at the stamp let's see i have it right here when you look at it it looks flat you guys see that but then it has all this detail in it it's really really interesting so i've come up with several several projects today and i'll have a bonus one on monday um two 3D projects today because when the stamp is fruit themed, I usually have a pretty easy time <laughs> finding treats for it. So of course this one was no different. All right, let me get situated. I feel like I'm a little disorganized today. I actually lost track of time. I was prepping for Club Create and I ran, I looked at the clock, I had like three minutes. And I forgot to draw a prize from last week. So that means that next week we'll have two winners. All right. All right. I'm going to turn you guys around. Let's see if I can do this real quick. And we're going to, I'm going to run through some things. You know, I thought today's projects were pretty simple, but when I recorded all the, the videos yesterday for YouTube, they took a long time. So I'm going to try not to talk for a long time today. Let me clear some room. Okay, so paper shares. I just sent out an email a little while ago, a couple of hours ago, um, about my paper shares. Let me get this situated. There's like a weird glare. I added a light to see if maybe my lighting would be better. Now it's kind of glary. I don't know, it's probably this thing. Let's take this off and see how it looks without it. You know, it was just trial and error, you guys. You never know what it's going to look like. Trash. <laughs> okay, so paper shares. Uh, Monday's my firm cutoff. Um, if you have already registered for paper shares, I've already ordered your paper. Um, these will take me a couple of weeks to get done simply because I have to do Club Create first and my um, Be, Mine Va Be My Valentine or Be Mine class to go first. These will ship. My my goal is February 3rd, but I think I can do them by the end of January. This uh, time around, I'm doing two different options, 12 by 12 or 6 by 12. Um, there was only eight packs of paper in the catalog this time, so I thought, you know what, let's do something different. If you are a scrapbooker, especially, getting a full-size sheet is nice. They're going to come in these little, uh, these are pattern paper pockets, you know, the scrapbookers you organize your paper in. So you're gonna get one of these. Um, the other option is six by 12 and it also has this really cool plastic envelope. I'm really loving these right now. I've been putting my classes in these plastic um, pockets, if you will, and they're great. So anyways, the last day to register for this is Friday. Those of you who've already registered, I've already ordered for you, but there's still room if you wanna join us. Um, the link was in the email I sent out today. Um, if you did not get that email, then send me an email and I will email it to you. <laughs> There's a link um, at the bottom of today's blog post. Has anybody checked to see if today's post is up? There's a link at the bottom as well as on today's PDF um, that'll take you to the page with the pricing and all the details as well as the link to email me in case you don't have my email address. All righty. Next up is Club Create. So... I usually switch over my Club Create page on the 8th. Like I'm, you know, like, okay, I got to do that today. Well, I realized today I hadn't done it. So it has changed. This is uh, February's Club Create. And if you subscribe right now to Club Create, this is going to be your first kit. The Perennial Lavender Suite. It uses both a painted lavender and perennial postage stamp sets and dies. Five, uh, four cards, one little... Um, well, that one looks like it's falling apart. One little hand sanitizer holder. Look how cute. It's a little pot. Wouldn't that be cute at like a shower as little party favors or whatever? I just thought that was so cute. Um, it has a lavender hand sanitizer in there. 
Club Create is my subscription program. Uh, once a month you get a kit, it's $45. It has about $20, $25 in product, um, like a half pack of cards, I mean a half pack of DSP, a bolt of ribbon, pack of gems, it varies each month. Um, and you use those products to make your five projects and then you have a ton left over to make a bunch more projects. Um, it comes with a PDF and a video tutorial. This one's video is 34 minutes long. Um, and then if you stay for six months, you get, uh, well, they're called, it's not Stampin' Rewards. That's basically what you're getting though. You're getting a $25 product credit because you're part of the program. Um, so in your sixth month, you get $25 to spend. I send you an email, you let me know what you want and I put it in your sixth month kit. Okay, so that is that. The subscription period for this is now through February 7th. All right. Um, all right, let's see. Now, what else do I want to show you? All right, be my Valentine. This is my class to go. This is not a subscription. This is a standalone class. Um, it's six projects using the Be My Valentine suite of products. So cute. Three 3D projects, three cards. Um, this one is my favorite. How cute. This little bumblebee is just so happy. Um, this class to go has, well, it has four options. With the bundle, if you don't have it. Without the bundle, if you already have it. PDF only. And uh, my downline, they get a special pricing on my classes. So the deadline for this class, I'm looking at my notes, is January 19th. So when is that? Next Friday? I can't see my calendar from here. Yes, I think it's next Friday. So you have until next Friday to register for that. And that will go out the following Friday. All right. Details on that also on my blog, also on today's PDF. All right. I'm trying to clear some space here. Hold on. Um, let's see. There was one other thing I needed to tell you guys about the all-star tutorial. This is the only month. Well, there's two months a year that you can subscribe and be a subscriber. And this is one of them. Um, this is the PDF that I send out for free uh, to everybody who spends $50 or more with me during the month. And um, this month's is the Lighter Than Air Suite. Um, it's got 12 video tutorials in it. If you have a demonstrator already or you are a demonstrator and you don't plan on shopping with me to earn it for free, you can purchase it in my PDF store or you can subscribe. And subscribers, I send it to you on the first of every month and the sixth month is free. All right. Um, the designers, all the... Um, Stampin' Up! demonstrators involved uh, are all over the world. And um, each one is a demonstrator, Stampin' Up! demonstrator. And we all come up with our own tutorial. We film a video, we type up the supply list as well as instruction, or um, I'm sorry, measurements and imperial and metric. And that is that. This is my project this month. It's a little pop-up box. That one doesn't work very well, but this one works <laughs> a bit better. I think I made that one too tight. See how that pops up? Those little Dove chocolates. Oh, I forgot those were in there. Mmm, yum. I'm trying to get off the sugar, you guys. Well, no, I'm not trying to get off the sugar. Let's not be crazy now. I'm trying to eat less sugar. I lose my mind during the holidays and just eat a lot of sugar. So then January is always painful. Because I'm like, okay, sister, back it up. Not so much sugar. <sighs> I like sugar a lot. I like chocolate a lot. I like candy. <laughs> okay, I think those are all the announcements. Um, oh, did I show you guys the kits? Did I show you these? I think I did show you these, right? These new kits. We have two new kits um, in our kit collection. They're both $14 and they are not stamp kits. They are um, they, they're already printed, so you just really are assembling them. Um, I think they're great for kids this month. Um, they're not specifically for kids, but I think they would be great for kids. Do you guys recognize the little panda from several celebrations ago? Very, very cute. Um, so this one is called Panda Friends, and this one is called Rock Legend Kit. Both are great if you want to have a craft to take with you somewhere, or if you just are limited on space and time, these are a great way to get your craft fix. So if you go to the Stampin' Up! website and you click, um, you know, the shop, 
or the little, there's little lines of products, it drops down. One of the little sections is uh, kits, kit collection. So they're all in there. And they're gonna have two new kits every month for us, which is awesome. Okay, I think we're ready, you guys. Um, I forgot to draw a prize. I lost track of time. I was listening to an audiobook, sorting a class kit. I looked up, I had like four minutes and I forgot. So I apologize. So this was for last week. I will have another bundle to give away next week. So next week I'll actually have two winners, okay? So if you shared the video last week, don't worry. You're still entered to, the, to win the prize. This week, if you wanna earn a, it's a bundle from the catalog, the new catalog, um, all you have to do is share the video here on Facebook or YouTube and I'll pick a random winner next week. All right, so, um, Lois, you are crazy. Sugar, pasta, bread, all at the same time. Oh my gosh. Um, what was I gonna say? Did you guys check to see if my blog post is up? It should be. It should be very cold in Minnesota, Kathy. I know, my husband's going to Minnesota next week. And uh, I'm like, ha ha. You have to go where it's really cold. He's actually excited about it. He's got all his cold weather hunting gear, you know, that he gets to wear up there. Not that he's going hunting, but he's got the, he's got the jackets and all that, the coats. Um, yeah, Lois, that, well, then that's a good reason for sure. It's posted. I was able to print it out. Thank you, Stacey. I appreciate that. Okay. Over at pinkbuggeroo.com. That's my blog. Today's post has all three of our projects. Let's see if I can get this straight. Um, all the details are there about today's project. So there's a PDF that looks like this under the last photo. It's free. It has the measurements and the supply list. There are quite a few measurements on the second and the third project. All the things that I just talked about are here. The other component of Facebook Friday is if you like today's projects and you would like for me to send them to you for free, all you have to do is put in an order between now and Monday at midnight. My order minimum is $35, but since celebration... I mean, I would think you'd want to bump it to 50 so you can get something free from this catalog. Everything in this catalog is free either with a $50 or $100 purchase from now until the end of February. And the, thing, the stamps that we're using today, Watercolor Melon, is one of those free options that you can choose. All right. All right, I think that's it. They look The little kits look like this. I cut them on Tuesday, ship them on Wednesday. You need the stamps. Um, the watercolor melon stamp set. I don't. I don't send any stamped images. That's a big no-no, you guys. We don't pre-stamp anything. That's a Stampin' Up rule. So you have to have the stamps. If you don't have the stamp, you don't want the stamp, but you would like the projects. Maybe you have something else that you can use. Of course, you can order anything you want in um, at StampinUp.com. Use the host code, and I'll send them to you. Um, a lot of people do that. They are like, "That's a cute card," but I would rather it be whatever. I'm going to use my stamps and that totally works too. It doesn't always have to be exactly what I use. All right. I think we are ready. So, um, we are in the, what is it? The second week of these two new catalogs. Let me grab my things. Hold on. And I'm going to put this here and you guys are going to be able to see the reflections of my lights. Um, I want to use this in the videos, but look at the light. <laughs> it's like a, like Mickey Mouse. So I can't really use it. What I can do is put a piece of grid paper on top of it so that it doesn't reflect. But I want to show you guys this glass mat. I told y'all last week, I was like, the glass mat, I don't really know what to do with that. I don't know what that is. Well, now that I have it, I love it. Um, it is a surface, like you just are going to put it under your, where you're going to stamp. And it really, especially with this stamp, I'll tell you on my counter, I was actually having a hard time getting a solid image. But as soon as I moved over to my glass mat, I didn't have that problem anymore. Um, there are a lot of ways to use this glass mat. Um, I showed you a couple last week. This week, we're gonna use it on our background. We're gonna use it with our background stamp. I'm gonna show you a really cool uh, way to use it with the sketched plaid background stamp. Okay, let's get started. And you know what? I don't want this to slide around like this. I'm going to put some tape. Hold, please. Because I can't stand that, a wiggly surface. 
really, you don't need the grid paper when you're using the glass mat. That's kind of productive. But the lights, guys, I can't, I can't use it for the lights. Um, it also comes with these two things here, this little, I haven't even told you how to get it. Hello, it's part of the starter kit, you guys. This glass mat studio, it comes, it's the glass mat, it's the silicone tray, and then the chamois. And um, in the back of your celebration catalog, you can read the details. It's part of the starter kit. The starter kit is always $99. Um, with free shipping, by the way. And during celebration, you get to pick out $125 of product for free for $99. And then you get the glass mat little bundle. They're calling it the glass mat studio on top of that for free. And it's uh, a $60 value. So that's pretty good. I would think 100, what does that make it? 100 and, um, so 60 plus 25, 85, $185 for $99. $185 of stuff for $99. That's pretty darn good. So if you're interested in the starter kit, look back here. I have a, a page at the top of my blog that says join. If you click that, it will give you even more details. Um, you get to be a part of my team, which means they always get my PDFs for free. They get my classes at a discount. We have monthly team meetings via Facebook. We have creative challenges with prizes every month. We have swaps. And then you get to be a stamp up demonstrator when you can take advantage of the, uh, the discount or earn a little bit of money if your friends want to order from you. You know, there's lots of ways. It's up to you how you want to use it. You can be your one and only customer. That's totally fine too. That's what a lot of people do. Um, it's, a great, it's a great value and I want you guys to just take a look at it if you have questions, let me know, all right? Okay, so Watercolor Melon. Um, this stamp set, like I mentioned, is the distinctive style. So when you look at it, it's like, if you feel the top of the stamp, it doesn't really have any texture, but when you stamp it, it's going to give you all this detail. Um, it's also called Watercolor Melon, so when you stamp it, it's not gonna be just a solid image. It's gonna have some variation in it, and that's because it's supposed to look like it's watercolored, all right? All right, the first thing we're gonna do is make this pretty simple card, and we're gonna stamp the slice. I decided my watermelons were gonna be Flirty Flamingo and Granny Apple Green. Those are the two colors I went with. And we're gonna stamp, there's two, there's two slices of watermelon. This one's bigger and it has a little bite taken out of it. Here's the smaller one. And I'll tell you, when I started playing with it, I stamped the small one and I said, where's the rind for the small one? This one's for the big one. And then I realized it actually works with both, surprisingly. I'll show you. Um, I have found, and you need to try it yourself to see which way you like it the best. But I like to, to stamp the rind first. Okay, I'm gonna stamp that in granny apple green. I may need some more cardstock. And then stamp the watermelon slice. And I just feel like I can line it up better this way. When I stamp the, the slice, the fruit part first, and then the rind, I seem to always leave just a little white space in between each one. So I found that this was the best way for me to do it. Let's see, I'll do it opposite this time and we can see. There, okay, let's see if I can get it lined up. Uh, oh, I did it. All right, well, it worked both ways this time. Play around, see which way you prefer to do it. Um, let's see, now we have two, two uh, seed stamps. One of them has three seeds in it, which I like, but I also feel like it kind of crowds your watermelon slice a little bit. So what I like to do is do the three at the top like that, and then take the one and just kind of go across the bottom like that. Maybe one there, like that, like that. All right, that's Memento Black. Now, there's no um, dies or punch 
for this part. There is a punch for the larger watermelon, which I'll show you next. But this one's going to require you to get out your scissors, your paper snips, and cut it out. And you'll find that it's not a real straight surface, I mean a straight line, which makes it even more forgiving when you're cutting. All right, and what I recommend, because we're gonna mount it on white, I recommend staying right on the outside of the image, leaving just a thin white border around it, because then it will blend in to those white squares behind, and all you're gonna see is the image. All right, thank you, Andrea. Um, I can see a pumpkin face if you don't have the rind stamp. Mmm, that's interesting. You guys are always thinking outside of the box. I like that. Pumpkins. Oh, I miss pumpkins already. We got a long way to go now till fall. <laughs> I love me some pumpkins, pumpkin stamps. All right, so cut those out. And then I have three stylish shaped basic white squares. This is not the smallest in the square selection. This is the second smallest. All right, and I'm going to put them on here with dimensionals. And I'm going to have them each turned a different way, okay? So I can get this picked up. So that one can go like that. That one can go like this. Hold on, like this. And then we'll have one kind of pointing down. All right, so there we go. We've got those situated. They almost look like they could be pizza slices too, right? Now, I have embossed a basic white piece with the sending, no, this is the raindrops. Raindrops embossing folder. I don't know if you guys can see it, but it looks just like watermelon seeds. So I embossed this piece, this basic white piece with that. This stamp set doesn't have any sentiments, so I went through and pulled out some sentiments that I liked. This card, you could really use any sentiment. I am going with, where is it? Oh, here it is. Um, note, a note of thanks. You could do happy birthday, thinking of you, hello, goodbye. <laughs> I don't know, whatever you wanna do. And I have just a strip of basic black and I'm going to stamp that. Let's see. I know you guys can't see it. I can see it. Is it straight? I can't tell. Let's put this on it and see. Um, Versamark is a clear ink, but when you put your embossing powder on it, oh, that looks pretty good. When you put your embossing powder on it, it sticks and you can see it. All right. Heat tool somewhere over here. Let's get it. it. Takes about, I don't know, 10, 15 seconds. There we go. Um, I also decided to use black and white paper on all three of my projects today. And I'm using the uh, Zoo, Zany Zoo. It's not called Zany Zoo. What is it called? Zoo Crew. Zoo Crew Designer Series paper. Um, you'll recognize the little cute critters on the back. While I am searching for my adhesive, do you guys see it? I have one here, but it's almost empty, and I know I have a full one. Let's see. Did I leave it? Hmm. All right, well, we'll use this one until it runs out. Now, this card base is four and a fourth by five and a half, right? The front, thick basic white. And I cut my designer series paper to fit the card front. I've been doing that a lot lately. Instead of leaving a border, I've been cutting the paper so that it goes all the way around the edge. And then take your, one thing about that though I will tell you is that you get, if you cut your DSP four by five and a fourth, which is what I usually do, which is what the size of this is then you can get six pieces out of one 12 by 12 sheet. But if you cut it four and a fourth by five and a half, you're only gonna get four, I believe. Four, yeah, Me that, that last section, you might be able to get one more, I can't remember, but you get less, but I think it's worth it. 
just to have that little border around there. Isn't that cute? You could also cut out the center. Do you guys do that? I know some people, if they're gonna use a big piece, they'll like cut a circle or something out of the center and save it for later. I just don't have the, I don't know. I'm just not, my brain isn't there enough to think ahead like that. Then you, you get more out of it, right? You can take it longer and I don't use the circle or the square or the rectangle, whatever you cut out of the middle um, from it. I know, some people are good like that. You do, Brandy? I know, oh, I, I don't know. I mean, I could if I was thinking ahead. This paper is called Zoo Crew. It's from the annual catalog, Kayleen. All right, so now I've got my ruler and my grid paper and you can use your glass mat for this. It's got the grid lines on it. And I'm gonna put three dimensionals. I'm gonna start in the middle. Let's see, we need to go down a little bit. And I'm gonna line this up right here. Okay, and then I'm gonna get another one and we'll put it here. I'm using the ruler to make sure that they're straight on the bottom. And then this one's gonna go like that. And the only other thing you need to look at is how, how far spaced apart are they? You might need to move them over a little bit. And the dimensionals will give if you have to pop them off. Now, if you try to pull them off tomorrow, they will not come off. <laughs> I don't know what it is, but after about a day, dimensionals are like super strong and they will not come off. Okay, so there we go. Yeah, all right. Now we're gonna take this guy and look, I've got a little bit of long skinny piece right here that we can use. I think I'm gonna need to cut this down just a bit. Let's see. It needs to be five inches and it looks like it is five and a half. So I'm just gonna snip it right there and put that right there. Nope, right, <laughs> right there. Nope, a little bit more, there we go. All right, so now you can leave your card like that. Easy, right, simple, or you can take your stamp and carry over the design on the inside. Just, and I have told you guys this before, I am not good with words. So when I have to write stuff in a card, I'm always like, oh, what do I write? So if you stamp on the inside of your card, then you have less room to write. <laughs> I'm letting you guys in on my dirty little secret. You don't have to write so much. And then you can take your little seed and just kind of sprinkle it around, so cute. And there you go. Oh no, no, hold on, stay there. I didn't push it down enough. Stay, all right, there we go, ta-da. Okay, card number one, very easy, simple, no embellishments, no bows, but still pretty darn cute, I think. What do you guys think? All right, I'm gonna situate my camera a bit. I don't like the way things are looking. Let's zoom in just a bit just a bit like that okay there we go you know tiffany i am not a simple stamper at all and honestly to make a simple card is much more difficult for me if i start out with the uh, with the uh, objective of making a simple card is very hard for me but when i do make a simple card i'm like yes i love it i wish i was better at making simple cards i tend to <laughs> do i go over Overboard, too many layers, too many embellishments, too many things. That's just the way I do it. Okay, card number one. Now, project number two is a 3D project. Lots of watermelon flavored things out there. This one holds an extra watermelon gum. Long lasting flavor. Um, do you guys like the flavor of watermelon? I think my mom, I think it's watermelon she doesn't like. I do like watermelon flavored candy. I can't get my camera right today, sorry. It's still just not right. I can't stand to see the playback and everything's crooked and messy. Oh well, okay, leaving it. Okay, so now we're gonna do, let's see, we're gonna do the holder first. And for the holder, um, let me open, I have two of them. Let me open this one. For the holder, Oh, what was that? 
something in my bathroom fell. Um, for the holder, you need to find um, a die in your collection that will cut out a rectangle. Um, I looked through all my dies and I actually had three or four different options. And this was the one that I liked the best. Um, it'll slide, your gum will fit right in there. Um, it's kind of a weird one too. It's from Wonderful Thoughts and it's this little frame label die, I guess. It just makes a little frame. Um, another one that worked really well was the vase from Earthen, Earthen Textures, Earthen Elegance. You know which one I'm talking about in the annual catalog? The vase. That would actually cut one as well. If you can't find one, we used to have, remember the word window punch? You could do that like twice, double it up. That would probably be big enough. If you don't have one, you can always put it in your trimmer and just cut out a little rectangle window. Um, but that's what I'm using from Wonderful Thoughts. Sometimes you gotta look at your dies a little differently see what you can do. This gum, you can pretty much find anywhere. I think it's from Walmart. I think that's where I ended up getting it, but I'm pretty sure you can find it pretty much anywhere. Okay, you're gonna need a piece of Granny Apple Green that is 10 by three and a half. And um, Lisa, did you really? Lisa, you and I do that a lot. We're kind of always in like the same thought area with our projects. On the long side, scored at two and three fourths, three and a fourth, six and three fourths, and seven and a fourth. Remember, this is on the PDF. Don't worry. You don't have to write it down. All right, so this will fold in to the middle, okay? So fold this one in like this, and this one in like this, so that they're gonna overlap like that. Okay, so we're gonna put this hole, this window, right here. Okay, so that's why I've got the tape on it. And you wanna do it, I think that's a little bit too low. You wanna do it about an, a half an inch down from the top and make sure it's equal distance from left and right. And Make sure it doesn't slip out of place. All right, so let me get my, gotta have all my plates on here. And we'll put this in here. Now you guys remember last week I told you about the lost dog. If you were here last week, there was a, a lost dog. I had found the owner, the dog had been missing for two weeks, he'd been on the lamb, he'd been running all around the city. Well, she did finally get him. At 11 o'clock on Saturday night, she was out here. She brought her other dog with her. The dog was deaf, so he couldn't hear if you called him, and he was very skittish. Well, she brought her other dog, and when they saw him, she let her other dog go, and she said, go get Remy, and the other dog went and got him. And then he saw them, he got excited, and he came back to them. So it was a happy ending to the lost dog story from last week. I wanted to make sure and tell you guys that. Okay, now I'm gonna stop here and we're gonna set this aside. See how this is gonna fold in like this. But I wanted to do the sketched plaid on the front and it's a small piece and so it's just this section that I wanted to do. So you can actually, if you want, lay just that piece down on your background stamp or use your stamparatus or whatever. But I decided to just stamp a second piece that's a smidge smaller and adhere it there. Just for the sake, ease, the sake of ease. For, for, it, for it to be easier and not so messy. Now here's one thing I wanted to show you guys with this glass mat. You can use it with your background stamps. It'll stick like that now and it's not gonna move and you ink it like this, and then you just lay your piece down onto your stamp. All right, let's see how we did. Ta-da! All right, and so then your, your hands are a little messy, that's why you got your chamois. And then wipe it off. Pretty cool, right? That way, you know, if you 
Well, if you've bought the big block, first of all, they can be kind of hard to handle, right? Second of all, not everybody buys the big block because you're not gonna use it that much. You know, it's an investment, so I get it. So that's just another way you can use your glass mat. Pretty cool. Okay, so we're gonna take that piece, and I've lost my adhesive again, and we're gonna put um, this right here on the front. All right, now, well, let's go ahead and let's go ahead and close it up so you can see what I'm talking about here in a sec. I'm gonna take tear and tape and just put it right here. Fill the backing. Yes, uh, well, Carly, you know, my chamois, it does dry out real fast, but I also am just leaving it out in the open. My other chamois, you know, is in a, um, this, so it's protected. Also, it's much thicker. That one is like, I don't know, an eighth of an inch. I mean, it's real thin. And this one is a quarter inch. So yeah, it's definitely gonna dry out faster. I need to get a stamp case for it. That way it'll be sealed in. And I think it won't dry out quite as fast. All right, so see how I folded that down like that? All right, and then you take your gum and you slide it in. And then this is gonna fold over like that. So now for this piece, I have cut again, Zoo Crew DSP. I have cut it one and a fourth, but depending on how low or high you do your little window, you might need to adjust that measurement. Like this one, it was pretty perfect, right? See, but like here, it looks like maybe my window is up a little bit high, so it could have probably been an inch and a half. So you'll just have to play with your DSP to see, you know, how wide it needs to be. I'm gonna add Flirty Flamingo ink to it with my small blending brush. This is gonna look like watermelon seeds. I love black and white paper and we have this new rock and roll paper that's great, black and white paper too. I feel like we always just need to have multiple black and white paper on hand for all projects. All right, so set that down there like that, and then it closes like that. Now, this ribbon looks really good with it. And I'm gonna tie it at the top. My original project had the ribbon at the bottom, but I found that when I opened it, the ribbon fell out. So I was like, okay, maybe we need to have the ribbon at the top so that it'll stay stuck underneath the tag. So. We're gonna put it at the top. This is our black and vanilla check ribbon. Is that what it's called, black? It's got a weird name. Black and vanilla large check, something like that. This is a carryover from the holiday catalog. I love it. It's currently my very favorite. I do like our other black and white gingham, but I, I like this one because it's a little bit wider. All right, snip, snip. Now let's get that straightened out. Okay, now let's make our tag. I am gonna use basic white and we're gonna use that large stamp and then the half, like the slice. Um, so I was telling you there was a punch that coordinates with this one and it's our modern oval punch and it fits this perfectly. So when you stamp, you kinda wanna look at your punch to see how you're going to need to place it on your paper so that you can punch it. All right, Granny Apple Green down here at the bottom. Okay, and then also, actually, is this the one? Yes, this is the one we're using. Um, this one, it'll cut this one out too, like this. So if I stamp it right, let me think. If I stamp it this way, then I can punch it right out, okay? Watch, where's my floaty flamingo? So do it on the edge over here like this. And then, do, 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 where's my right here? Granny apple green, I should have done the rind first. Let's see if I can get it. Ah, perfection. Let's add a few watermelon seeds. You know, I think this one definitely needs the single seed stamp. You'll find when you start playing with it that the, uh, the three is a little bit too big. 
for some of this, what you wanna do. Okay, I feel like we need another one right there. Okay, stop, I'll put too many. <laughs> All right, now let's punch. We've got our whole watermelon and then over here, we can punch it as well, like that. Now I do need, I didn't put it right on the edge, so let's just trim off that top edge right there. Okay. Again, no sentiments in this set, so I pulled this one out. I know a lot of people have been using this with the watermelons, the Sweet from Super Cool. And we are gonna stamp it, if I can find it. Where is it? It's not here. Is it on the other tray? Hold on, yep, it is. We're gonna stamp this in Memento Black. And we're gonna do the fussy cut, the fussy cut technique. But I'm gonna show you guys, if you haven't seen me do this before, it really is a game changer when you are trying to fussy cut words, okay? You're gonna get your pencil and you're gonna outline it. And just go slow and go right on the outside, kind of following those words where you want your scissors to cut. And I know the first time I saw someone do this, I was like, okay, how is that any different? It's whatever, for whatever reason, it makes it so much easier to fussy cut your words. For one, when you're cutting out something with your scissors. You're just like guessing as you go. And if you make a mistake, if you get too close to the letter, then you can't fix it. So like right there, I got a little bit close. So I can erase. Oh, I did this yesterday. This eraser, this eraser, both of these erasers are not good. And these are those Ticonderoga pencils. They're supposed to be perfect. All right. So anyway, if you do that with your scissors, you can't go back in and fix it. But when you do it with a pencil, you can erase it and draw it correctly. Just make sure you use a pencil that doesn't smudge. All right, so now I'm gonna cut all the extra off, get my paper snips, and I'm just gonna carefully follow that line. And if you're if you have any pencil marks left over when you're done, you just go in and erase them. I know when I first photographed my project, when I went to edit it, I noticed I had left a pencil mark. So I went back, erased it, and re-photographed it. This one's gonna be, a, it's gonna have a smudge on it, and that makes me unhappy. But I'm not gonna start over right now. Maybe I'll cut it just a little bit closer right there. All right, round and round we go. Stay in the middle of your blades. There we go. Sweet. Um, I'm using one of these Everyday Detail labels. I love this die set. I have been using it a bunch. This is the third smallest, I believe. I had it in my head to tell you guys which one it was and now I'm second guessing myself. The third smallest of the labels. We're gonna put our watermelon right there. And our other watermelon, we're gonna put right like that. And then our sweet, we're gonna put right here. Now, where you guys are is the weather real bad. I know the weather around the country is like winter, polar, vortex, you know, they've been saying all that. Up north, you guys, how are you? Are you frozen? Are you are you dug in? Is the snow up to the roof? Down here, we had crazy wind again last night. Our new house is up on a hill, and it is like crazy. We had a 50 mile an hour winds last night, which is a lot, and it was loud, 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 loud. Didn't sleep well. Our, um, we have these screens on our windows, you guys, that don't just come off. It's very strange. You know, like usually you like lift up and then pull the screen off your window. Is it like that at your house? These we cannot get off. We actually broke one in the back 
trying to get it off so that I could clean the window. I'm gonna have to Google it. It's very strange, very strange. Becky, it's so cold in Eastern Oregon. Wind chill has us getting into negative. Ugh. I can't, I was just telling my daughter this morning, I can't, I mean, is your house, does your house stay warm when it's negative something all day? I would think that your house would have trouble stay maintaining that warmth and that kind of cold. Now I'm gonna put a few little of these matte, classic matte dots and they come in black, but I used all of mine. So I took my dark black stamp and blend and I colored some of the gray ones to make them black. So don't, if you ever run out of a color, don't worry, just get out your stamp and blends and you can color it and make it the color you want. Don't those look like watermelon seeds? I think they're very cute. Um, Iowa has real, has it real bad, right, Patricia? 15 inches earlier this week. Now we're again under blizzard warnings till noon. Oh my gosh, I don't even know what to say about that. That is insane. Okay, there you go, guys. Project number two is really cute and easy. This would make a great treat to hand out at work, at, I don't know, anytime. Who doesn't want gum, right? Okay, so let me clean up a bit, and I think you're gonna love the next one. I haven't done a boozy treat in a while, but I have a boozy treat for you guys. All right, this third one took me a while. It was really kind of like, what should I make? What should I use? There's all these different choices of candies and all these things. And then I happened to find a um, TikTok if you will. I don't really watch TikToks, but when I was Googling this idea, I found a TikTok for a little boozy drink that you can make with one of these um, flavor packets that you put in your water, you know? Okay, hold on. I gotta get this paper off the straight. Um, so when I was at the grocery store, looking for watermelon things, I stumbled across, I was looking for these actually, but I found these, Jolly, whoops, Jolly Rancher drink mixes, right? The whole box is like $1.20 or something, it's very cheap. And so I was trying to think of a cute idea to use it, and then I was like, I bet you could make a little cocktail with this. Sure enough, if, so, okay, this is how it's designed to you, so if you're not into boozy cocktails, that's totally fine. You don't have to do that. You can just use a bottle of water because that's what it's designed for. But if you want to get crazy and have a little fun this summer, you can pour it in a glass with either like a Sprite or a LaCroix and then put a little rum or a little vodka in there. All right, it makes just like a little watermelon drink. And so I made a little box, a little treat box that will hold, and I didn't have a rum, I just had rum chata, which is not really what I would use um, in my little drawer of little boozy bottles that I use for projects. Um, I would use just a, like a regular little vodka or a little rum, you know, that you can get at the liquor store, right? Um, so on this side, you have that, and then on this side is a couple of these little drink flavors, and then you could throw in some Jolly Ranchers too, but I thought if you didn't want to do the boozy thing, just put your candy on that side, right? Fill it up with candy if you don't want to do the booze. Also, I thought this would make a cute card too. Just a plain card, right? But we're going to make the box. All right, let's do that. There's several steps to this box. Um, you could use the limeade also. I haven't tried the watermelon limeade. I do like the cherry limeade, cranberry limeade. I'm not sure about watermelon limeade. That kind of sounds like very puckery. <laughs> you know where it starts to burn in the back of your mouth, back in your cheeks, because it's so sour. All right, let me look at my notes. The first piece you need, Flirty Flamingo. Now I need to do something to this box before I glue it. So if I start gluing it and I haven't done it, you guys start yelling at me, okay? Because both times I've made this box, I have forgotten to do it. So now that I've set it, hopefully I'll remember. Okay, eight inches by six and three-fourths. We're just gonna score it at one and three-fourths on all four sides. Now, I know you guys are like snowed in and you're like, we're not thinking about summer drinks, but it'll be here before you know it. 
<laughs> at least I hope. Um, another piece of flirty flamingo. This is going to be the little divider tray in the bottom of your drawer. Um, five by four and a half, and you're going to score it at one and a half, two and a half, and three and a half. Again, all these measurements are there on that PDF that's at the bottom of today's blog post. Third piece is basic black, four and five eighths by 11. And we're gonna score it at one and seven eighths, five and an eighth. So if you're using the Simply Scored, it's just that very first little tick mark, one eighth, five and an eighth. And then let me look at my notes, seven and 10 and a fourth, 10 and a fourth, okay? Okay, so now that we've got all that done, Let's, let's do the little drawer part first. Get your, your bone folder and burnish all your lines. Now, here's what we need to do, okay? I'm not gonna forget. We need to stamp the little watermelon seeds on the front and the back of the drawer. And both times I made this box, I didn't do it until after I had assembled the drawer. So I had to strategically I could get my seeds. I had to strategically stamp <laughs> when I'd, uh, I'd already put it together, and that's not easy. So don't forget to stamp your seeds before you put it together, okay? So just, just to make it really cute, we'll put these little seeds here. The first time I actually cut another piece of Flirty Flamingo and glued it on, the second time I was like, hey, I'm not doing that. I just put my thumb behind it and stamped very carefully and it worked fine, but I don't recommend it. Do it this way, it's much easier. Okay, so there, now we've got that. I won't forget. Scissors, where are my scissors? All right, so there are two things that you can do to this drawer. You can cut the score lines here and then the tabs, this is the way I think you should do it. Then the tabs go behind the part that you pull because I think that strengthens that part of the box. But the, the problem there is that then when we go to punch that little circle, it's a little bit, if you don't trim your tabs, it makes it difficult to punch through three layers. So I'm gonna show you how I solve that problem. The other option is if you cut your score lines on the long side, your tabs will be glued here, um, which won't be in the way of your punch, but then that means that your end isn't very strong. I don't know if that makes sense to you guys, but when I was creating, that was the process that went through my mind. And I discovered that punching through three, three layers of cardstock with my very old circle punch didn't do very well. So, so we don't have to do that. What I'm gonna do is cut off some of the corner. I'm not doing like all the way, I'm just doing kind of partial corners to remove the, ed the top edges of these tabs. Okay, so that's what your piece looks like now. And I'm gonna take my liquid glue Denise, um, uh, Denise is my friend and my assistant and my neighbor. And she told me that they put hurricane bracing, as I was called Denise, on their house and they built it. And I was like, what? And then my husband said, oh yeah, we did that too. Well, last night I understood why. Because up here at the top of the mountain that we live on, it got crazy windy, like scary windy. I told y'all, I think I told y'all last week, or was that on Monday? The barbecue pit, the wind was so strong, it blew the barbecue pit off the porch. That's, that's very strong <laughs> wind. Luckily, it didn't go in the pool. It went the other direction. But crazy, crazy winds. Okay, so adhere those into your sides like that. All right, and then you can take whatever circle punch you want to use and just do a little boop like that. So you have a little notch for your finger. Okay, like that. Now, this part... We're gonna do the middle, the middle score line up and then the other ones down so that you're making like a W. And then we're gonna take my adhesive, it's disappeared again. I'm gonna put some adhesive on all the sections and I'm gonna fold these in so that we have a strong divider in our drawer and 
set that right down in the middle. Oh, yes, Cindy, that would be a great idea. Yes, yes. You know, boozy drinks aren't for everybody. I always think, you know, when I make a boozy project, I'm like, not everybody's going to want this. But that's okay. You can always switch things around. Denise, your chairs were in the pool. Yikes. The dog bed did end up in the pool, and then it weighed like 500 pounds because it was full of water. Crazy. All right, so this is the little tunnel you're going to put your drawer in. And um, on this skinny tab, we're gonna put, I'm just gonna use stamp and seal. Tear and tape would probably be a better choice. Fold over the opposite end, and there you have it. Okay, so now we have all that. Let's do our stamping. Oh, I'm so excited to show you guys this new die, okay? Um, I am kind of doing a mishmash here of sentiments. I wanted to use this new mini alphabet die um, to show you guys how fun it is. Um, sometimes when you have alphabet dies, they're a little like um, tedious, right? And you're like, oh, you have to put them all on your thing and don't lose them. Well, these are all on one die, which I love. And they cut and they, you'll just, you just have to watch. It, they come out beautifully. So I wanted to use that and I am piecing it together with this sentiment right here from Sweet Citrus. We're going to cut out the middle word and do enjoy the sweet things in life. Okay. So let's bring this machine back over. And we're gonna lay this down here. We're gonna cut it out of basic black. This new little mini alphabet die is in the spring mini catalog. And then, let's see. Ta-da! Look at that, they're just all there for you. And it has um, multiples of some of the most used letters like the E that we're gonna to use today, there's two of them. Here's one right here. All right, so it's a cool die. I like it, I wasn't quite sure if I was gonna love it, cause you know, alphabet dies are tedious, but I do love it. Um, now I'm just gonna use liquid glue, S-W-E-E. -E. Um, but you can also put an adhesive sheet on the back of your have I lost letters already? Where's my other E? Is it, it's still in the die, yes. Um, you can put adhesive sheets on the back of your cardstock before you cut it out, and then they're just stickers, and you just peel off the backing, but I thought it would be faster if I did liquid glue. So that's what I'm gonna do. Let's see if I can do it without making a huge mess. You can use your, take your pick tool. Okay, come on. It's either gonna not come out or it's gonna explode. There we go, okay, we got it. You can use your take your pick tool to kind of arrange things. And when you use liquid glue, you have some time, you have some wiggle room before it dries to get it nice and straight. S-W-E-E. -E. Uh oh, there we go, like that, there we go, sweet. All right, let's stamp the sentiment in, I'm kind of, kind of working backwards, that's all right. We'll stamp the sentiment in Flirty Flamingo down here, just on the very bottom edge of a basic white piece. And let's just set that aside for a minute. Let that dry. This piece of paper right here, if you know anything about me, you know I love grid paper. I love to write on grid paper. I love grid journals. So this paper, when it came, this is the trusty toolbox paper and it's in the celebration um, catalog. It's free with a $50 purchase. And I am gonna be using this grid paper a ton because I love it. All right, we're going to use the larger watermelon slice this time. And we're just gonna kind of do, make our own little mishmash of images. And I will say the first one I made, there is a, be, behind this is another piece that's stamped. And so then when I put that on there, you can't even see it. So think about where you are stamping your 
watermelon slices so that you'll be able to see them. All right, and then get the rind. Oh, I did it, I did it. I've stamped, I inked it in Flirty Flamingo. I did that yesterday too. Good thing my chamois is sitting right here. Let's do it in Granny Apple, the right color. I did it backwards. All right, that works. You kind of have to do your, um, you know what, I think I'm gonna do another one. I feel like we're off centered. You kind of have to do it, mm, I don't know. Yeah, I'm gonna do another one right there. You kind of have to do the watermelon slice, the fruit part first so that you know where you're going with all of these and if they're gonna overlap or whatever. Okay, so let's leave it like that. Then let's get our seed and add some seeds all over the place. But also we have to put some seeds in our watermelons. Let's get the larger, the three, because this watermelon slice is bigger. So this one, this um, triple seed stamp fits pretty good in this slice. And a couple more. And then last but not least, let's just flick some Flirty Flamingo ink, some splatter like that. All right, so we've got that piece done. Now we're gonna stamp the piece again one more time, if I can find it. And we're gonna cut it out with our scissors. So Granny Apple rind, Flirty Flamingo fruit, and Memento Black Seeds. Hi, Debbie. No worries. Well, now we do need the single one because I'm off-centered. There we go like that. Okay. And then we will quickly cut it out. My poor daughter had a tennis tournament today, the first one back of the season in this wind, cold, cold wind. I was so worried about her, but she was like, whatever, it's fine. I've got a blanket. Okay, it's tougher than I am. It actually is a beautiful day this afternoon now. It's not too bad. All right, so we've got all of these things. Let's piece them together. We need to cut this. I'm gonna slice this off of here, off the end. Let's see if I can do this like that. And then we'll cut. We need to cut out things in life and enjoy the. And we're gonna toss the sweeter because we made a big, cute sweeter. All right, so we've got all these pieces. I cut out another piece of the Zany Zoo paper with the Radiating Hearts dies. And my dimensionals are in this huge mess of a pile over here on the left somewhere. Let's see if I can find them. I think I have another sheet up here. Yep. All right, let's start with our watermelon slice in the middle of the vellum circle. And the reason I did the vellum circle, I don't think I put this on the supply list. I think it's the two and three eighths inch circle punch is to kind of soften it so that it'll stand out, kind of spotlights it a little bit. And then we'll put dimensionals here. You guys, I did a swap. Did I tell you this? I did a big swap and um, my return swap, the cards that are being sent back to me are lost in the mail. I'm so upset. They haven't been scanned in a week. I don't know where they are, I don't know. I was hoping to have some swaps to show you, some other ideas to use this set, and I can't, they're not, they're nowhere. <laughs> they're lost. I'm very sad if I did all that work and I don't get any swaps back. I know they were shipped. I can see that they were scanned, but they're lost. All right, heart, and then we need to add the bow. So hopefully, fingers crossed by next week, they were shipped on the third. They should be here already. It keeps saying, your package is running late. In, it's in transit. It's been saying that for a week now. 
It's very sad. I know that happens sometimes to my class kits too, and they usually end up making it. It just maybe is like stuck somewhere at the bottom of a pile. I don't know. It's very upsetting. Very upsetting. All right. Last but not least, we've got a black and white gingham bow that we'll just put right there. Let's come over here. We're going to attach it to the top of the tunnel like that. Open it up. I don't have any other, let's see, I've got this. I don't have another rum, so we'll just do the candy this time. And we'll slide it in like that. And there you go. You're, let's open it so you can remember what it looks like inside. A boozy watermelon treat. Fun, right? Too fun. Nancy, they were coming from Minnesota. A lot of mails delayed. Yeah, Dina, yours was yours was delayed, wasn't it? And you don't live very far from me. I know, I'm sad. And it's not like I can just order a new set. <laughs> it's like 40 people sent in their swaps. She sorted them out and are mailing them back out to everybody. So if I don't get them, I'm pretty much, you know what, SOL. Sad, that's never happened to me before, my swaps. Okie dokie, we are done. I have one bonus project for you. Uh, let me show it to you. It'll be on Monday. I went with another color scheme for this one. Um, Melon Mambo, if you will. And I use these border dies that I hardly ever have used. I saw a card that was similar with another company that had used a border die like that. And I thought, ooh, we're doing that. And then I carried it over on the inside. So that'll be Monday. Um, if you would like these projects in a little make and take kit mailed to you for free, I will be happy to do that for you um, with a order. If you put in an online order, you can order anything you want by Monday at midnight. Just make sure that you use that host code. If your order is over $150, don't use the host code and I will still send you the projects. When, you, when your order gets to $150, you get free stamping rewards and I want you to get those. Um, but if you use the host code over $150, you won't get them. So make sure... I know that doesn't make sense. You're like, what? Say it again. If your order reaches $150, you're going to earn stamping rewards. Don't use the host code. If your order is $51, please use the host code because you're not going to get stamping rewards anyway. That will tell me that you want the projects. If your order is under $150 and you don't use the host code, I'm going to think, okay, she doesn't want the projects. All right, so please make sure to use that host code. Um, these will, I will cut these on Tuesday, ship them on Wednesday, and hopefully yours will not get lost in transit <laughs> like my swaps. Okay, that is it, you guys. I will see you next week. Next week, we are doing um, the mailbox set. What's it called? I'm drawing a total blank. Sending love. Is that what it's called? The little mailbox set? So cute. All right, I will see you guys. Y'all stay warm. And have a great weekend. Thanks, everybody. Bye.